Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadasya Yato Nivayad Uttaratas Charte Suavigya Swarat Janmadasya Yato Nivayad Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyan Tiyat Suraya Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyan Tiyat Suraya Tejo Vari Nidam Nivayo Yatra Tisargo Mesha Tejo Vari Nidam Yatra Vinimayo Yatra Tisargo Mesha Dam Nasrina Sadanirash Tasah Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Dam Nasrina Sadanirash Tapuhakam O oh my Lord Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O oh, all pervading personality of Godhead. Uh, from my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primal cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations, As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on the water. water, seen on fire and land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they're unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitra vutra. Paramo nimatsaranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kim Vapurir Ishwaraha. Osadur Hide Avurudyate Kra. Krite Behi Susu Subhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from the illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in its maturity is com uh, is uh, is um, yeah is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatiru galitam falam. Sukumuka damrita dravya samyatam. Pibuta bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahuraska bhuvi bhavuka. O expert and thoughtful men, relish shimad bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. 
although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hriyam Takstu Badrani. Vidu Nati Sritsatam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous uh, is itself righteous activity. It is self righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, and for one who hears about Krishna Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart Lord Krishna is dwelling within the acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta Praesu Bhadvesu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kamalo bhadayas chaye chete tari navidam stitvan satve prasidati by development of devotional service of the Lord. I'm sorry. Uh, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. And thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavad tattva vigyanam. Bhagavad tattva jayate. By development of devotional service, I'm sorry, when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Chidyante Sarvasam Saya Shiyante Chasakarmani Trista Evatmanishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. <coughs> and enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagam. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Supreme Absolute Truth. Srimad Bhagavatam Kanta 1, Chapter 14, verse number 37. Simply by administering comforts at the lotus feet of the Lord. Hey, I'm sorry. Yada Pada Susrusana. Mukya karmana. Satyado Dvyasta Sahasra Yosita. Nirjitya Sankhya Trida Samstad Asiso. Haranti Vajra Yuda. Simply by administering comforts at the lotus feet of the Lord, which is the most important of all services. The queens at Dwarka, headed by Satyabhama, induced the Lord to conquer the demigods. Thus, the queens enjoy things which are prerogatives of the wives of the controller of the thunderbolts. 
purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Satyabhama, one of the principal queens of, the, of Lord Sri Krishna at Dwarka. After killing Narakasura, Lord Krishna visited the palace of Narakasura accompanied by Satyabhama. He went to Indraloka also with Satyabhama, and she was received by Sachi Devi, who introduced her to the mother of the demigods, Aditi. Aditi was very much pleased with Satyabhama, and she blessed her with the benediction of permanent youth as long as the Lord remained on the earth. Aditi also took her with her to show her the special prerogatives of the demigods in the heavenly planets. When Satyabhama saw the Parijata flower, she desired to have it in her palace at Dwarka. After that, she came back to Dwarka along with her husband and expressed her willingness to have the Parijata flower at her palace. Satyabhama's palace was especially bedecked with valuable jewels. And even in the hottest season of summer, the inside of the palace remained cool, as if air conditioned. She decorated her palace with various flags, heralding the news of her great husband's presence there. Once, along with her husband, she met Draupadi, and she was anxious to be instructed by Draupadi in the ways and means of pleasing her husband. Draupadi was expert in this affair because she had five husbands, the Pandavas, and all were very much pleased with her. On receipt of Draupadi's instructions, she was very much pleased and offered her good wishes and returned to Dwarka. She was the daughter of Satrajit. After the departure of Lord Krishna, when Arjuna visited Dwarka, all the queens, including Satyabhama and Rukmini, lamented for the Lord with great feeling. At the last stage of her life, she left for the forest to undergo severe penance. Satyabhama instigated her husband to get the Parijata flower from the heavenly planets, and the Lord got it even by force from the demigods. As a common husband secures things to please his wife, as already explained, the Lord had very little to do with so many wives to carry out their orders like an ordinary man. But because the queens accepted the high quality of devotional service, namely administering, administering the Lord all comforts, the Lord played the part of a faithful and complete husband. No earthly creature can expect to have things from the heavenly kingdom, especially the Parijata flowers which are sp simply to be used by the demigods, but due to their becoming the Lord's faithful wives, all of them enjoyed the special prerogatives of the great wives and the denis denizens of heaven. In other words, since the Lord is the proprietor of everything within his creation, it is not very astonishing for the queens of Dwarka to have any rare thing from any part of the universe. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <clears throat> so when Krishna is in Dwarka, he's exhibiting the activities of an ideal grihasta. And this is to give an example to everyone how to act properly. Because Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, if he did not follow the rules and regulations himself, then it would cause the degradation of society. He explains in the Bhagavad Gita, third chapter, verse number 24, if I did not perform prescribed duties, all these worlds would be put into ruination. I would be the cause of creating unwanted population, and I would thereby destroy the peace of all living beings. <clears throat> so Varna Shankara, Prabhupada says, is unwanted population which disturbs the peace of the general society. We see that today in all the uh, Black Lives Matter, no justice, no peace, rioting every day, burning, destruction, and it's being tolerated, where before it would never be tolerated. The United States defeated Hitler, the United States defeated Kaiser Wilhelm, the United States defeated uh, Japan, the United States uh, also uh, uh, stopped the uh, spread of communism all throughout uh, in Korea, and also uh, the United States defeated Al-Qaeda, 
<laughs> but it's not deciding to uh, stop the uh, rioting that's taking place now by a bunch of thugs. So these are these thugs are called Varnashankara, unwanted population, which disturbs the peace of the general society. They're born of lusty behavior, and their parents don't take the time to instruct them properly. They don't learn any much in school other than becoming a, a, a communist or a, a, a rioter. So therefore, in order to check the social disturbance, there are prescribed rules and regulations by which the population can automatically become peaceful and organized for spiritual progress in life. When Lord Krishna descends, naturally he deals with such rules and regulations in order to maintain the prestige and necessity of such important performances. The Lord is the father of all living entities, and if the living entities are misguided, indirectly the responsibility goes to the Lord. Therefore, whenever there is general disregard of regulative principles, the Lord himself descends and corrects the society. We should, however, note carefully that although we have to follow in the footsteps of the Lord, we still have to remember that we cannot imitate him. Following and imitating are not on the same level. We cannot imitate the Lord by lifting Govardhan Hill as the Lord did in his childhood. It is impossible for any human being. We have to follow his instructions but we may not imitate him at any time. The Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 33, 30, verses 30 to 31 affirms, one should simply follow the instructions of the Lord and his empowered servants. Their instructions are all good for us and any intelligent person will perform them as instructed. However, one should guard against trying to imitate their actions one should not try to drink the ocean of poison in imitation of Lord Shiva. Of course, everyone's trying to imitate Lord Shiva by drinking poison in the form of marijuana and other drugs. So uh, that's why you have such a breakdown of uh, morality in the society today. We should always consider the position of the Ishwaras or those who can actually control the movements of the sun and moon as superior. Without such power, one cannot imitate the Ishwaras, who are super powerful. Lord Shiva drank poison to the extent of swallowing an ocean. But if any common man tries to drink even a fragment of such poison, he will be killed. There are many pseudo devotees of Lord Shiva who want to indulge in smoking ganja, marijuana, and similar intoxicating drugs, forgetting that by so imitating the acts of Lord Shiva, they are calling death very near. Similarly, there are some pseudo-devotees of Lord Krishna who prefer to imitate the Lord in his Rasa Lila or dance of love, forgetting their inability to lift Govardhan Hill. It is best, therefore, that one not try to imitate the powerful, but simply follow their instructions, nor should one try to occupy their posts without qualification. There are so many incarnations of God without the power of the Supreme Godhead. Okay, so Krishna follows the rules and regulations in Dwarka of an ideal grihasta in order to inspire others to do the same. And all his sons are good sons. They're not communists, they're not rioters, they're not dacoits, they're not uh, predators, and so forth. Okay, so then... Uh, then we see that there's there's a real need to read about Krishna's activities in Dwarka to understand what is an ideal husband, what is an ideal family, and how to uh, educate one's children to be ideal. All these things are explained by the behavior of Krishna with his uh, family, the different wives and family members. So if we look at the 10th uh, Canto Srimad Bhagavatam, we'll see. Sage Narada visits the homes of Lord Krishna. Yeah, he, 
he heard that Krishna was in Dwarka had over 16,000 wives. And in the city, there were as many as 900,000 great palaces built of first-class marble with gates and doors made of silver. The pillars of the houses and palaces were bedecked with jewels, such as touchstones, sapphires, and emeralds, and the floors gave off a beautiful luster. The highways, lanes, streets, crossings, and marketplaces were all beautifully decorated. The whole city was full of residential homes, assembly houses, and temples, all of different architectural beauty. All of this made Dwarka a glowing city. The big avenues, crossings, lanes, and streets, and also the thresholds of every residential house were very clean. On both sides of every path, there were bushes, and at regular intervals, there were large trees that shaded the avenues so that the sunshine would not bother the passerby. <clears throat> when Narada arrived at Dwarka, he saw gardens and parks full of various flowers of different colors, and also orchards overloaded with a variety of fruits. Beautiful birds were chirping, and peacocks crowded crowed delightfully. There were ponds full of blue and red lotus flowers, and some of these tanks were filled with varieties of lilies. The lakes were full of nice swans and cranes, and the voices of these birds resounded everywhere. Okay. In this greatly beautiful city of Dwarka, Lord Krishna, the Supreme Person of God, had many residential quarters. The great kings and princes of the world used to visit these palaces just to worship him, the architectural plans were made personally by Vishwakarma, the engineer of the demigods, and in the construction of the palaces, he exhibited all his talents and ingenuity. These residential quarters numbered more than 16,000, and a different queen of Lord Krishna resided in each of them, the great sages. Narada entered one of these houses and saw that the pillars were made of coral and the ceilings were bedecked with jewels. The walls as well as the arches between the pillars glowed from the decorations of different kinds of sapphires. Throughout the palace were many canopies made by Vishwakarma that were decorated with strings of pearls. The chairs and other furniture were made of ivory and bedecked with gold and diamonds. And jeweled lamps dissipated the darkness within the palace. There was so much incense and fragrant gum burning that the scent of fumes were coming out of the windows. The peacocks sitting on the steps became illusioned by the fumes, mistaking them for clouds, and began dancing jubilantly. There were many maid servants, all of whom were decorated with gold necklaces, bangles, and beautiful saris. There were also many men, men servants, nicely dressed in cloaks and turbans and jeweled earrings. Beautiful as they were, the servants were all engaged in different household duties. Lord Narada saw, and Lord Krishna was sitting with Rukmini, the mistress of that particular palace, who was holding the handle of a chamras whisk. Even though there were many thousands of maidservants equally beautiful and qualified and of the same age, Rukmini Devi personally was engaged in fanning Lord Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, worshipped even by Narada. Yet as soon as Krishna saw Narada into the palace, he got down and immediately from Rukmini's bedstead and stood up to honor him. Lord Krishna is the teacher of the whole world and in order to instruct everyone how to respect a saintly person like Narada, he bowed down, touching his helmet to the ground. Not only did Krishna bow down, but he also touched the feet of Narada and with folded hands requested him to sit on his chair. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality guided by all devotees. He is the most worshipable spiritual master of everyone. The Ganges water which emanates from his feet sanctifies the three worlds. All qualified brahmanas worship him and therefore he is called Brahmanya Deva. Brahmanya means one who fully possesses the brahminical qualifications which are said to be as follows. Truthfulness, self-control, purity, mastery of the senses, simplicity, full knowledge by practical application, and engagement in devotional service. Lord Krishna possesses all these qualities and he is worshipped by persons who themselves possess such qualities. There are thousands and millions of names of Lord Krishna, Vishnu Sahasranama, and all of them are given to him because of his transcendental qualities. 
Lord Krishna and Dwarka enjoyed the pastimes of a perfect human being. Therefore, sage Narada took the water on his head. Narada did not object, knowing well that the Lord did so to teach everyone <clears throat> how to respect saintly persons. Therefore, he, Krishna, washed the feet of the sage Narada and took the water on his head. Narada did not object, knowing well that the Lord did so to teach everyone how to respect saintly persons. The Supreme Personality of God, Krishna, is the original Narayana, an eternal friend of all living entities, thus worshipped the sage Narada according to Vedic regulative principles, welcoming him. With sweet nectarian words, he addressed Narada as Bhagavan, or one who is self-sufficient, possessing all knowledge, renunciation, strength, fame, beauty, and other similar opulences. He particularly asked Narada, what can I do in your service? So we see the ideal behavior of a grihasta. This keeps going on. Uh, we don't have time to read it all, but it is uh, chapter 69 in the Krishna book. And you can read it. It's very instructive for all grihastas and for all people to know that the Supreme Lord himself is the example of what he's trying to teach others to do. Hare Krishna, Gaurisa Srila Prabhupada, Are there any questions? <clears throat> 